Hey everybody, it's Jorick. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. If you are new, I'm glad you found me. Please consider subscribing as I like to talk about moving to and living in Portugal as well as I sprinkle in a little Europe travel news when I get it. Today is a video I've wanted to make for some time because this year I've done a lot of scouting trip or consulting phone calls with people from around the world that are thinking about making a move either temporarily or permanently to Portugal. And a couple of common themes have come up and I'm going to start making videos of those. And the first one and the most common thing that people have asked about this year, we're going to bring a dog or dogs. It's a vacation or we're moving. How do we get them there? What's the process? So today's video, I'm going to talk about what's the process? What do you got to do? What are kind of the forms? And then some considerations and points to ponder for I'm going to consider flights as opposed to any other way of getting here. Um, some of the limitations or what you can do to get your dog on board and in the cabin or in the hold section. And then I'll do a quick recap at the end for you. But I'm hopeful that at the end of this video, you'll have all the information you need to be able to figure out how to get your dog from your home country into Portugal. So here goes. One of the first things that you're going to need to look at is an international health certificate. It may be called a health certificate. If you're inside the EU or the UK, it's called a pet passport. But this document is something that you can complete some of it. Your veterinarian is going to complete part of it and you're going to need to have this completed. The health certificate, or if it's called the international health certificate, depending on your country, has to be done within 10 days of travel. The pet passport will have things in it like vaccines, which we'll get to in another slide or two. But that is one of the main documents that you're going to need. So depending on where you are in the world, it may be called probably one of these three things. The next thing you're going to need to make sure is that your dog or dogs are microchipped and they must be ISO compliant. So when you're getting your dogs microchipped or if they already are, you may want to just check with the veterinarian, go to the local animal hospital and make sure that those microchips are ISO compliant. And then the third thing, and very important, is vaccination. It can be rabies. They have to be current on the rabies shot. It may be the one, two, or three-year vaccine for rabies, but it's got to be one of those. Also, something to keep in mind, too, um, it needs to be done at the same time or after your dog is microchipped. Now, that all depends on the records that you have and when the last rabies uh, vaccination was. And then that has to be done 21 days before arrival. So kind of within that, I'll say three week period, you're gonna to have to make sure that you get that done. Next thing to think about is the airlines. What are you gonna consider? What airlines are you going to take? And it's very important, as much as you're working on the documentation, make sure that vaccine and microchip is checking with an airline and figuring out what the rules are because there may or may be variances on weight limits, meaning what dog or dogs you can bring on board in the cabin, which ones have to go below in the hold, which ones you may not be able to bring at all, what the costs are uh, for uh, bringing a, a dog with you, whether it be, again, in the cabin or hold. All of the airlines, uh, there isn't necessarily uniformity, if you will. The, the costs may have a range, as well as some of the weights, whether it be in pounds or kilograms, may be different. So it's important that you check with an airline because depending on what they say, may deter you from one airline and it may, you know, put you in, in going in another direction uh, with choosing another airline that might be more conducive with your situation based upon whether you're bringing a dog or dogs, how much they weigh, things of that nature. I do want to make sure that you realize in Portugal there are a few breeds that are considered banned, so they will not allow you to travel, whether it be a short-term holiday vacation or on a long-term basis, into Portugal. And those breeds are Pitbull, uh, Dojo Argentino, uh, Tosa Inu, Rottweiler, and then a couple of different types of Staffordshire Terriers. The American Staffordshire Terrier and the Staffordshire Bull Terrier 
specifically. That's something I found on a Portugal website that they're saying these breeds are banned. So that's difficult because if you're coming for a vacation short term, well, then you'll have to find a kennel or a boarding facility that uh, can handle uh, those particular breeds. If you're looking to move here long term, uh, that's going to have to be a decision that you make based upon the type of breed, if you have one of these breeds of dogs. So unfortunate uh, for, for you, but I want to make sure that you have the accurate information. Another thing that you have to consider, as I mentioned uh, previously, is the cost. How much is the cost of the ticket, whether it be in the cabin or in the hold or underneath kind of with luggage and everything else? Where will the dog be? How much does the dog or dogs weigh? That will impact some of this decision. And again, based upon what airline you're choosing, Maybe it's not based upon you know, the breed's fine, the weight is fine, but it might be cheaper to work with one airline versus the other, and that is why you end up choosing that airline to come over here for short term or long term. But the ticket cost, very important. So let's talk about cabin. So if you're able to take uh, your dog in or dogs in the cabin, couple of things to keep in mind. It does depend on airlines. There are some, again, specificities when it comes to weights and things, but typically speaking, uh, dogs up to 20 pounds are allowed. Soft carriers, so that means it's not a hard carrier. It's something almost like a, a duffel bag. Uh, there are many uh, that you see. I'm sure many of you watching this video either have them if you have dogs or have seen them on airlines where it's a soft carrier where uh, if the dog is out, you could actually collapse it. It is also something that most likely would be able to fit underneath the seat in front of you as oftentimes that's where uh, they're putting, uh, you may be putting a dog or dogs, depending on if you're flying with a partner along the way. And then something to keep in mind, which I believe is worldwide. I'm not, I can't confirm that though, but I do believe that if you have a requirement of a service dog or an assistant dog, that that dog, regardless of size, is able to fly on the plane in the cabin. What I'm not positive about, and maybe you can comment below if you have experiences, is if there are certain breeds, meaning some of the banned breeds in Portugal, if for some reason you have a service dog of that particular breed, uh, have you been able to fly uh, internationally or into Portugal with that dog? Mainly the breeds are not one of those banned breeds that end up being service or assistant dogs, but I just, I'm curious because it's something I don't know. But it is, uh, when you're thinking about dogs in the cabin, it's definitely smaller breeds unless it's an assistant uh, dog of some sort. So again, service dogs are exempt from the weight, uh, but they may not be based upon the breed, but you need to tell me that in the comments. So in the hold, so if you're going to be uh, use, uh, taking your dog with you, but it's going to uh, be traveling underneath you in the hold area, Generally, what I found in looking at numerous airlines is about 45 kilograms, about 100 pounds maximum, depending on airline, is about all that they will allow. And it has to be kind of a sturdy container. So, and you may have these as kennels in your house uh, if uh, the dog is staying inside. Um, but most likely, you know exactly what I'm talking about, the steel kennel container, or it's the sturdy where you could probably sit on top of it and it won't collapse. It's something that is, is very, uh, uh, again, sturdy is the reason it, uh, they have the name sturdy is because it will hold up, uh, especially if they decide they're putting something uh, above uh, or laying other things on, uh, on top of uh, the dog container. Generally, uh, they don't, but I have also seen videos on YouTube where uh, that hasn't always been the case. Some tips I want you to think about when you're looking at the hold container as you're thinking about getting on the plane is long before, after you book the tickets probably, but before you are going to the flight, have your dog or dogs use that specific container for a couple of weeks so they get familiar with it so that you're not putting them in it the, the day of the flight and then they're freaking out going, this is a new space, I don't know what's going on here. So familiarize uh, your dog with the container. It will reduce stress on the flight. 
it's going to be stressful enough. Uh, you just don't want your dog freaking out too much uh, because it's now an unfamiliar small space that they're staying in as well. And then if you have the opportunity to put a little water in, try to. Some airlines don't allow that. So that, again, sometimes is airline specific. Veterinarians will often say, try not to feed your dog. Uh, limit the amount of food, maybe a couple of treats, but not a lot of food because oftentimes there will be, uh, let's say, accidents or things that happen on a long flight, especially if you're coming from North America to Portugal. That's several hours and they're gonna to have to go to the bathroom. So you just uh, hopefully don't want them uh, dealing with uh, a lot of messiness. I'll leave it at that. Um, there's also recommendations of maybe having a toy or two. So again, from a familiarization standpoint, your dog or dogs uh, have something familiar uh, and comforting to play with uh, while they're waiting to reunite with you uh, once uh, the flight ends. And then lastly, having like a, a blanket or some sort of padding, padding, uh, and I'll say that absorbent padding that can pick up the, the messes that are going to happen on the flight and maybe a blanket. So if uh, your dog is able to go to sleep, can kind of curl up and get some good rest uh, while on a particularly long flight. So to recap here, the, the main things, be current on rabies vaccine, make sure dog or dog's microchipped, they have the documents, the health certification, uh, international health certificate, passport, vet passport, whatever that's called in whatever country you're coming from. Those are the biggies that people need to have. And then as you're coming to Portugal, enjoy it. Hopefully uh, your dog uh, being with you will give you a better experience on your vacation or holiday. And then also knowing what the process is is one less thing to worry about when you're considering a move to Portugal. So as always, thank you so much for watching and enjoy your travels.